You're going to the junkyard to pick up an LS and you're going to run it carbureted. Here's the question. What intake should you use? If you're looking for an LS, there are obviously lots to choose from. But if you go to the wrecking yard, the two most common are the 4.8 liter and the 5.3 liter. This video is about an intake test run on the smaller 4.8. Now intake choice for the little 4.8 is even more critical. In this video, we're going to take a look at an intake comparison between a single plane intake and a dual plane intake on the little 4.8 liter. And just to spice the test up a little bit, we're also going to include the factory truck intake that came on the motor when you got it from the wrecking yard. Okay, before we get going, I want you to take a look at the reflection in my glasses from my light. If you take a look at that, I think that I might have a superpower. I might have developed x-ray vision. <laughs> it's kind of cool. This is our 4.8 liter, and they're easy to find in the wrecking yard. Whenever we go there, this is one of the most common engines that we find. We find either a 4.8 or a 5.3. Very rarely do we ever see a 6 liter. If we do, we snatch it up right away, but they're really hard to find. I can almost never get there and find a 6 liter. It's either <laughs> it's either already gone by the time we get there, or there aren't any there. But there are usually a lot of 4.8s and 5.3s. This test was actually run on a 4.8 liter, and I did get, originally get this thing from the wrecking yard. We used it a lot, in it, but we ended up hurting it. I heard a piston on it. We cracked a ring land because, you know, probably because I didn't do the ring gap like I'm supposed to when I was running boost or nitrous or something. So a lot of times we're not really nice to these motors. But we ended up replacing it with a JE Forge piston. It was 10 over. It has a small dome on it, so it's got a little bit higher than stock compression. But otherwise, it is a stock rod, stock crank, stock block in the 10 over block as we had machined it. It had a set of 706 heads with 26 918 valve springs on it and it had a very small extreme energy comp cam in it. It was a, I'm going to give you the specs on it here, it was a 265 cam that we've run a lot, we did a bunch of testing with, but it has a 522-529 lift split, 212-218 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. Now we got this thing and we also equipped it with an Elbrock Victor Jr. intake manifold for the LS and then a 650 Holley XP carburetor. Although the other carburetor I like to run on this and if you take a look at the other videos where I did the, the, the cheap carb versus the expensive carb, that brawler carburetor obviously works just as well, especially on a, on a mild combination like this. So if you're looking for a carbureted LS application, I, I think, and you're trying to do it on the cheap, I definitely would go with the brawler carb. This thing was run actually both ways. We tried it with an MSD ignition controller, which works just fine. And we also ran it with a Holly HP management system because we were eventually going to run, and we did run fuel injection on this. So we ran this combination, as I said, with that small cam, stock heads, and a carbureted combination with the Victor Jr. and the small 650 Holly long tube headers, you know, kind of the way that you do it if you're setting up for a mild kind of performance application. But run in this manner with the single plane intake manifold. This combination produced 376 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 336 foot-pounds. And I want you to notice that peak torque occurred on this combination on what is admittedly supposed to be a fairly mild combination, occurred all the way out at 5200 RPM. And even though we had a pretty small cam in it, peak power occurred at 6,300 RPM. And while this is, a lot of guys choose the single plane intake, I don't think it's ideal for, an ideal choice, for a carbureted application on this small displacement 4.8 liter. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we started doing some intake changes. After running our 4.8 liter with the Edelbrock single plane Victor Jr. intake and 650 Holly carburetor, it was time to perform an intake swap. And the nice thing about an LS is <laughs> intake swaps are very easy on that. You don't have to unhook the water or anything. So it takes no time at all. They all have O-rings for like sealing and stuff. So an intake swap is kind of a joy on an LS application. So we removed the single plane Victor Jr. intake and then we installed this Elbrock dual plane RPM air gap, air gap style intake or RPM intake manifold. And the dual plane is kind of the go-to intake manifold for any kind of street application, whether it's a small block Chevy or small block four, or even, even some big blocks. We like the dual plane intake because it's designed to run in this kind of RPM range. Something up to 6,000 or even 6,500, you get a little bit of a trade-off usually between a typical single plane and dual plane test where the single plane might, might make a little more peak power and the dual plane makes more power down low. But in this case, as you'll see on the LS application, 
there really is no <laughs> there really is no choice there's no consideration here so let's take a look and see what happened when we ran the dual plane intake on here so this is the rpm the rpm is in red and you can see it made almost identical peak power 375 horsepower but take a look at the torque production the peak torque was up to 341 foot pounds but it occurred down here at 3800 rpm in fact it carried basically the same torque number the peak torque was 341 it was still making 341 point well actually the peak torque is a little bit higher out but it made dual torque peaks let's say down here at 3800 and then again here at 4800 and this thing was just almost perfectly flat from for about a thousand rpm and take a look at the torque here uh i'll go ahead and move my recording up a little bit you can see take a look at the torque difference here below 3500 rpm i mean we're talking about 340 foot pounds versus 282 foot pounds for the single plane the single plane just does not help the carb meter very well down there there's just no signal to it but on a dual plane there's a ton of signal and that's, it all helps it make a ton of ton of torque so basically what the dual plane did was make every bit of power that the single plane did at the top end all the way out past 6500 rpm it basically mirrored the single plane from 5800 out to 6700 rpm but everywhere below that it just made a ton more torque which is where you're going to spend 90 percent of the time driving on a street and even on a street strip car for a strip application the dual plane would just <laughs> kick the heck out of this single plane manifold so it's just a better combination especially on this little 4.8 liter so if you're looking at a carbureted combination you definitely want to put a carburetor on some sort of early muscle car you're swapping this thing in or you want to do it on the cheap and you use the the msd ignition controller and a simple carburetor remember go with a brawler carburetor on this application go with the dual plane put together a 48 and this combination will actually work pretty well a 375 horsepower small block would be a, would be a healthy combination especially one that has a torque curve like this or a torque plateau as we like to call it when we're when we're talking about ls stuff so this is what happened when we ran the dual plane versus a single plane as you can see it's really no competition go with the dual plane especially on the 4.8 liter now let's take a look at one other intake test that we also ran while we had this thing up on the and here's basically the completion of our intake comparison on the 4.8 liter and this should get all the, <laughs> i'm sure should get all the efi guys like up in arms and and get them chanting and telling the carburetor guys how terrible carburetion is when the reality is between any kind of comparison between carburetion and fuel injection if you run it on the same intake manifold the carburetion usually makes more power only because it offers charge cooling that the EFI does not do. Now the cool thing about EFI, we've been through this a hundred times, is that you can dial in the air fuel curve at every combination of RPM and load point, which is something you cannot do with a carburetor. It would be nice if you could. Um, and then the other thing is a lot of guys say, well, okay, well, what, what happens if I put the fuel injection like the throttle body fuel injection on a carbureted intake you can do that and and that helps with charge cooling and it adds power you can do some tuning with it but you can't do individual cylinder tuning the way that you can with port injection so there's always going to be a trade-off in no matter what kind of combination you pick so if it's it but in this case this is just basically uh, we're going to compare the truck intake to this dual plane intake because to the single plane it's just not even a comparison but to the dual plane intake it makes makes an interesting comparison but it's not carburation versus fuel injection because this, this is a completely different intake design so here's what happened anyway this is our this is our 4.8 liter with the dual plane uh, rpm intake and that 650 holly here's what happened when we ran it efi with the factory truck intake manifold the one that comes with the motor when you get it from the wrecking yard move myself up here as a matter of fact I'm going to put myself down here in the corner so the blue is the <laughs> factory truck intake and as you can see as we would kind of expect all the runners are the same length you know they're all long runners it's designed to enhance power production it was designed for the motor that it was on so it has a lot of things going for it you know it's, it's 
it's just a good combination. So equipped with a truck intake, this thing made 382 horsepower and torque, peak torque was up to 359 foot-pounds of torque. So the truck intake, obviously a good choice for a 4.8 liter. The interesting thing is not so much that the truck did truck intake did better. We kind of expected that. The only thing is, you know, in the carburetor's defense, you still have to have fuel injection to run the truck intake. So you'd have to have a complete motor with all the fuel injection, be able to tune it and all that. So there's something to be said for guys that want a carburetor. And, I, and I'm not going to go into the <laughs> which one's better. If you think one is better more you know than the other one that that's okay you guys can argue you guys can all argue about that but the interesting thing that i want to point out is take a look even though the truck intake has very long runners and you'd think that it would be really really good at torque production take a look at what happened below 4300 rpm on the dual plane intake and i and i've run this kind of test a lot and this this always happens with the dual plane the dual plane carbureted intake actually makes more low speed torque than the long runner truck manifold does and that's kind of surprising but i mean if you look at dual plane intakes on factory on factory carbureted combinations back through the <laughs> through the many decades they always perform really well they always have good drivability they always have really good torque production so if you were to look at an old 350 or 327 with a dual plane intake i mean this is what you see it makes really good low speed power all the way down below 3500 rpm e even better than that long runner truck intake does only from 4,500 out to, you know, like 6,500 does the truck intake, you know, show its superiority. So it's just an interesting combination between, you know, an, or an interesting comparison between the dual plane intake and the truck intake. So all you EFI guys now can jump up and down and talk about how cool, how much better fuel injection is than carburetion. But I just wanted to show the carbureted guys, hey, this is what you're giving up and it might be something to consider. If you can run the factory fuel injection and have somebody tune it, you can get some extra power, you know, maybe some extra drivability, but also know down below 4,000 RPM or even below 4,200 RPM, it's going to have less torque. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about our comparison between the single plane intake and the dual plane intake on the little 4.8 liter? Here's the takeaway. If you're going to get the little motor, the little 4.8 liter, which I love, but I love all of them, <laughs> but if you're going to get the little 4.8 liter, definitely pick the dual plane intake. It is a much better choice for any kind of street operation. If you're going to rev this thing out to 9,000 RPM, then yeah, maybe look at a single plane. Otherwise, for any stock or mildly cam 4.8 liter, definitely pick the dual plane. But if you're going to go to the wrecking yard and you're going to get a motor, pick the bigger 5.3 liter. You'll be much happier. It makes more torque. It'll make more power. It'll make the intake choice easier. But even on the 5.3, I'd still pick a dual plane for almost any combination except the 9,000 RPM stuff. I'm Richard Holden, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. What about that truck intake? I'll keep testing.